our next speaker is uh, Sure Shratan from the Aarhus University here in Denmark. Namaskar. It's so nice to be here in 542-year-old university's ceremonial hall. I don't know how old the hall is, but... Uh, Okay, 200 years old, huh? So we are dealing with the age and numbers, yeah? So it's a fantastic. Uh, I have been living in Denmark for 37 years, but I never got a chance to get in here. So thank you, Morten, for letting me come in and participate in this thing. Because these are exciting times for aging research. There is so much opportunity to become rich and famous. Uh, and why I say that, it will become clear. And I want to talk about Drugs for health, because usually in our medical terminology, we use drugs against something, yeah, not so drug against Alzheimer, drug against diabetes, drug against that. But I would like to talk about this new category of things, ormitins, as drugs for health. And what are those? Why are those? This is the aim of this 17-18 uh, minute uh, long lecture. So. The great achievement of aging research has been that biological aging is well described in the last 50 years. My mentors were doing it, my generation was doing it, now the next generation is ready to take the next step. And what we guys have done, describe aging, what happens in aging at individual level, group level, population level, system level, organ level, metabolic level, yeah? And this metabolic pathways, I have just given few examples, but there will be hundreds more coming. Where we have shown this is what happens with aging. And we assume sometimes that everything which happens is bad. And we must remember that we are dealing with living dynamic systems. A lot of things happening have maybe sometimes even useful effect. When hormones go down, insulin goes down in long lives. There. Okay, well, that's a bigger lecture. But what is the great achievement is that we can correlate with many, many things. And we have understood it all. And I would like to remind you, and this was the exciting part here, after one and a half year of uh, corona isolation, talking in the presence of live audience of 100 people and maybe hundreds and thousands uh, online, uh, sharing this excitement of the aging field, which can make us Rich and famous, because so far we were working for becoming famous and rich. Uh, most of us in the 50 years, we became famous. Most of the, my famous mentors are all dead, yeah, also. But richness was not coming. But now, considering how many sponsors you can get for this conference, so many industries there, industry needs to have uh, money created also, which is a, a good noble cause. I don't I hate that. I would like it also. But so far, in basic research, we became reasonably famous, like I always say, I'm very famous, all the five people know me. Yeah? So what I have understood so far, or people like me who were trained in the field of aging, that what are the principles of aging? First of all, aging is primarily a progressive loss of health and failure of maintenance. That's how I understand it. It's a progressive loss of health. We can talk about what is health. Aging is dynamic, complex, heterogeneous, and individualistic, all the way down to the molecular level. Hmm? This is what I have learned in 40 years of doing research and teaching in the field of aging. And the third is evolution has not made any enemies in the body to kill me or to make me old. Genes affect every aspect of life, but there are no genes evolved with a specific purpose to cause aging and death. That will be easy, actually, because then you have an enemy and then you neutralize it. So when I want to do something about aging, which is full of problems, which is full of diseases, which is making me weaker, frail, and I'm uh, nearing towards death one day, what shall I do? Of course, the great achievement of the third generation now is pick up those individual targets and do something about it. It's wonderful. It's very powerful. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Because going from top to bottom was a challenge and a great achievement. Going from bottom to upward 
taking one thing at a time and relating to any functionality, any property, any resilience, any robustness, Rudy has been talking about all those things, is going to be billions of times more challenging. But that's the, that's the model we have in the world, the drug model, that you pick up on something and you do something. We will get rid of beta amyloid and all the Alzheimer patients will start dancing. No. There have been spectacular failures of clinical trials when we start with one target at a time. One target at a time has fantastic value in certain acute situations. But if we want to talk about aging, the way I would like to say that aging is the loss of health, how do I maintain health? How do I maintain, how do I uh, enhance, how do I recover? So that is where this next area of hormesis comes into the story. The word hormesis has already been used by Maria, but I can explain it a little bit more. Hormesis is primarily the relationship between stress and health. Stress is the principle of life. Without stress, we don't live. Every time you breathe, you create stress. That keeps the metabolic processes into action. There is no such situation as stress-free. If, if you want to be in stress-free situation, you are a dead person. You know, stress is the principle of life, but there is a correlation. There is a Chronic and high stress is killer. We are too much aware of that. And I should not undermine that, that stress is bad. But stress at lower doses promotes health. It promotes our homeodynamics. It promotes our survival ability. That is the principle of what we call hormesis. Hormesis word was coined in 1930s, but in the last 25 years or so, it has taken the big shape and the hormetic society. Uh, you might be familiar with the terms like biphasic dose response, adaptive dose response, compensate, all these, but now we call that hormetic curve or hormesis, which basically again says the same fact that at a low level stress, repeated low level stress can be good than chronic at high level. Yeah? So this is the thing which, and the terminology has been then uh, refined on that conditioned hormesis where you give low level so that you can take high level stress later on, that's called conditioning. Physiological hormesis is where you do it, same stress again and again and again, and then post conditioning. So phenomenon is hormesis. Any agent which can cause this phenomenon, we coined the term in the hormetic society to call it hormetin and the field of study can be called hormetics. And the best hormetin and the best drug for health, which nobody can challenge, and there are millions of, well, what, papers, exercise. Exercise is the drug for health, which beats many drugs, those single-targeted drugs. Yeah. How does exercise work? It's one of the worst things we can do to our body. Exercise of the leg improves my mood, improves my cognition, improves my muscle power, improves my all the way, sexuality, everything, anything you manage. This is exercise. Exercise is not a drug against anything. It's a drug for health. And that's a hormetin. The word hormetin we use to point it out towards that. So the idea which was applied in aging research from about 25 years, 30 years ago, where my lab in Ohush uh, was one of the pioneers, was that repeatedly challenging the body with mild stress of choice, in human beings that word becomes very important, stress of choice, will stimulate compensatory adaptive mechanisms. And in order to stay in time, I will just rush through that what are the basis of that, why they get stimulated. Because we have basically these major seven intracellular uh, stress responses. If anything induces the cell to respond by one or more of these pathways, that has potential to become hormetic. When UV light hits you, your DNA gets challenged or damaged, there are hundreds of DNA repair enzymes get activated. And I'm glad to know that Center for Healthy Aging Morton's group is using that as the search for millions of new compounds. Fantastic. But there are seven, six other pathways. There are antioxidants. When you have oxidative damage, antioxidant response comes in. When you have nutritional challenge, autophagy takes over. When you have inflammation. So all these processes are so well studied in molecular biology that you can choose what to follow it up. 
all these so-called antioxidants, they are majority of them are pro-oxidants, but the effect is antioxidative because the NRF2 gets activated and hundreds of them antioxidative genes take over. So there is huge amount of data available on that. Based on that, we call hormetins for health fall under three categories. Physical hormetins, <clears throat> exercise I already gave you example, data from radiation, biology, data from uh, hypoxia, about uh, again heat and cold stress, then there are mental hormetins, a lot of the stuff we do by mental exercise, cognitive exercise, they are hormetic. But most of the research is going on on what we call the supplementary or nutritional hormetins. All the things in the food which are often good for us are actually good because they are horribly poisonous. All spices come under that category. Why are they good? Because they are bad. And we call, call them antioxidants? No, 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 they are hormetins. Even fasting, calorie restriction, Maria had just talked about that. DR mimetics, they are going to be good because they are hormetins. They induce that pathway. So in our labs, in OHUS, in the last 25 years, we have done huge amounts of work. They are all published, so I'm not going to show even a single slide on that. Just to make this idea available to the industry, to researchers, that look, you can discover new hormetins at any level. Now, for example, at the moment, all these major compounds being tested, whether that's a fisetin as a synolytic or curcumin or quercetin, uh, even, even metformin, Maria, I would like to make a comment. Uh, metformin, metformin kills old cells more quickly. Isn't that your data? Yeah, that's a synolytic then it becomes. Yeah, it's not bad. So anyway, well, that's a part of discussion. That's a signal. So nutritional hormetins is a big area. The problem with the hormetic theory so far is because there also we usually pick one stress pathway at a time. But in reality, it doesn't work like that. So in our labs, we have done that, that if you give heat shock as a hormetin, so heat shock response is the first one and the primary. But then the remaining six also respond at different kinetics and to different, even sometimes negative. So we try to create hormetic stress profiles of all the pathways. Like if you fast, yes, autophagy will be the first one. But then what happens to other responses? Without that, we cannot create a health profile measurement device or something. So this is one way which we will need to do if you want to get into horm hormetic research, how to study stress profiles of a healthy and a more healthy and less healthy and a diseased uh, individual. So a few years ago, I have written this protocol for any industry that if you want to discover new hormetins, how that should be brought about. How do you start with your compound? How do you check for various stress hormones? And some of the industry which has taken, actually initiative has been paradoxically <laughs> cosmetics, which are not supposed to do anything actually. So, but cosmetic industry has been developing hormetic uh, interventions, but they don't openly are able to say that, except one company who says that. So hormetin for health, not targeting any specific disease, just like exercise is not targeted against a disease, it will never cure a disease, it will try to give your whole system its own way to manage health and improve health. And that itself is a big issue. What is health? So I'm just giving these three latest books from our book series on three and hormesis. How do we talk about health? How do we measure health? What are the foods, role, etc.? But in my understanding, after having lifelong research career in aging, I think we have to talk in aging about how to improve health. It doesn't mean that we don't need these anti-disease approaches. Disease approaches, are, they are acute, they are needed now. That's a matter of life and death for an individual. But if we want to do anything about aging, please think in terms of how it will help me to improve health. And that area will be more acceptable to the public also. Anti-aging slogans don't work. They just frighten me. Oh, otherwise this disease and that disease. I think I have used up my time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Suresh. We have time for one question. Um, there are quite a few questions on Slack, so maybe you can go later on Slack to answer them. The most upvoted question is from 
uh, Morton, are some hormetic pathways more important than others? Uh, some hormetic or all? Yeah, 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 that there will be which hormetic will result into, for example, so far there is more data on NRF2, yeah, where people call them antioxidants. But generally they're all hormetins because NRF2 leads to hundreds of genes upregulation. Same thing what you are doing with DNA repair. DNA repair, how many genes are there? 120 genes. 400 maybe? Okay, I'm <laughs> remembering my <laughs> education. So how many of them are, so that kind of work can be done if we approach this question with this uh, idea that this is the stress response which is going to help the body itself to take care of it, which is already there. Not anti-aging, but pro-healthy aging. So that's why for health, drug for health. <laughs> you can... Well, so, you have to control the yeah, time, we are of course. A bit tight in time, so maybe you can just answer to some questions on Slack later. Anybody from the hall? Ah, uh, can we take yeah, one? Yeah, okay, one hmm. question from the audience. How do you individualize when you're from that stress? How do you know individual? Yes. Th that question is a general question for all medical interventions, it's personalized. Yes, it can be answered if more research is done. We have tried to do various donor cell types and studying their uh, stress response profiles and that will create this certain uh, measurement that okay if I have this profile this is more healthy or less healthy or more hormetic. These can be answered. These are just proper scientific questions which haven't been asked yet. But that's the general problem for all medical. We don't know personalized medicine yet. So. Okay, thank you very much. Great, Swish. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. thank you.